Hello and welcome to our movie on Rosselatinib and the story behind its development. Once a patient is diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer, we can perform mutational analysis for the epidermal growth factor receptor gene. Once a mutation in this gene is detected, these patients are eligible for treatment with targeted EGFR inhibitors. The EGFR receptor consists of three parts, the ligand binding domain, the transmembrane domain and the kinase domain. Once the ligand EGF binds the receptor, the kinase domain is activated and downstream signaling is initiated. If the kinase domain contains the L858R mutation or an exon 19 deletion, this downstream signaling is increased and an oncogenic transformation of the cell takes place. Under wild-type conditions, ATP binds the kinase domain and activates the downstream EGFR signaling pathways. The first-generation inhibitors are lotinib and gefitinib, go in competition with ATP for binding the kinase domain, thus blocking the downstream signaling. However, after a year on average, a secondary T790M mutation can occur, favoring ATP binding again and restarting the signaling. The second-generation inhibitor afatinib can overcome this by again winning from ATP, thus inhibiting signaling again. The third-generation inhibitors osimertinib and rosiletinib take this a step further by irreversibly binding the receptor at cysteine 797. However, a tertiary C797S mutation can occur, preventing this covalent bond and re-initiating signaling once more. Rosiletinib was tested in the TIGER trials. The first report showed very promising results with a 59% overall response rate. A couple of months later, however, this percentage had dropped to 53% and in January 2016 only a 34% response rate was left. Rosiletinib was designed to also inhibit the insulin growth factor receptor 1 to prevent this resistance mechanism. Due to the long half-life of this metabolite, this led to hyperglycemia in over 20% of patients. Some questions arise regarding the developmental process of rosiletinib. While it took 10 years for the first generation and 8 years for the second generation, it only took 4 years to develop rosiletinib. Was this too fast, given its full stop on May 6, 2016? Secondly, which criteria does the FDA use to give breakthrough status to a drug? And finally, what with the constantly changing response rates of rosiletinib? We have come to the end of our movie. Thank you for watching and we hope you will also enjoy our review on rosiletinib.